2,000 years ago, the early church was able to do something that even the Caesar could not do himself, to bring unity in the midst of diversity. The ancient world was divided along ethnicity, along class, along male, female um, division and barriers, but, but, but something happened amongst the people who followed Jesus. So why gospel-shaped multi-ethnic churches? Well, first and foremost, the, the word gospel or good news was a common word that was used um, by an emperor when he was placed into a position of authority. He would send out his apostles or messengers throughout his kingdom. They would blow a trumpet in city center squares and say, I have good news. If you confess, say, Nero is Lord and bow down, you'll have eternal peace and prosperity. Well, the early church said, no, we have the real good news, that there is a new king, and his name is Jesus of Nazareth. He's Israel's Messiah and the universe's true Lord. And through his sinless life and through his atoning death on the cross, through his resurrection, not only are people forgiven, but the forgiven people become the new people of God from every nation, tribe, and tongue, social, economic class, men and women are equal in Christ. And, and so the gospel, the good news does more than just the individual work. It takes individuals and it makes us a part of a beautifully diverse family. So why gospel-shaped multi-ethnic churches? First, it's God's eternal purpose realized in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 3, 8 through 11 says this. The apostle Paul writes, this grace was given to me, the least of all the saints, to proclaim to the Gentiles the incalculable riches of Christ and to shed light for all about the administration of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. Verse 10, this is so that God's multifaceted wisdom may now be made known through the church to the rulers and authorities in the heavens. This is according to his eternal purpose accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Well, eternal means eternal. This has always been on God's mind. So Jesus accomplishes God's eternal purpose, which is Jews and Gentiles becoming the new people of God, the family of God. It's interesting. The word multifaceted wisdom literally means multicolored, that God's people unified across ethnic and social economic lines in Christ actually puts the authorities, that is the demonic realm, on notice that Jesus truly did win. Why gospel-centered multi-ethnic churches? Because local multi-ethnic churches are God's fulfillment to his covenant with Abraham. In Galatians chapter 3, the apostle Paul uh, communicates to us what the good news is, and the struggle in the Galatian church was this. You had Jewish believers wanting non-Jewish believers in the Messiah to take upon the Jewish ethnic cultural boundary markers such as circumcision, food laws, and Sabbath. And Paul is saying, no, what makes us the people of God is the new cultural boundary markers of faith in the Lord and being baptized. And so the Apostle Paul uh, enhances our understanding of what the good news is. Galatians 3, 7 and 8 says this, you know then that those who have faith, these are Abraham's sons. Now the scripture saw in advance that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and proclaim the gospel ahead of time to Abraham saying, all the nations will be blessed through you. Think about it. God says to Abraham, all the nations will be blessed through you. Genesis 10 and 11, God's people are scattered. Genesis 12, God tells Abraham, trust me, and I'm going to give you a family made up of all the families upon the earth. So Jesus comes as the fulfillment of the promise. Jesus not only forgives our sins, but he gives us brothers and sisters with different colored skins, thus fulfilling God's covenant with Abraham. God keeps his promises. And so the multi-ethnic church is not because America is becoming more diverse. It's because God made a promise to Abraham and Jesus through his life, his death, his resurrection and ascension and ascending of the spirit fulfills that promise. In Galatians 3 verses 27 through 29, um, this good news people, this multi-ethnic church looks like this. 
For those of you who are baptized into Christ Jesus have been clothed with Christ. How beautiful is that? Regardless of your ethnicity, your social economic class, whether if you're male or female, if you're in Christ, we are all equally clothed in Christ. Can you imagine the power if when we look at each other, we say, I see Christ in you because we're clothed in Christ. Verse 28 says, there's neither Jew nor Greek. Greek is a synonym for any non-Jewish person. In other words, um, our differences are not erased. Our differences are celebrated in Christ. And so it's the differences that are redeemed that make us different. Together we achieve more because we see more of Christ through our differences as the unique family of God. Neither slave nor free. This deals with economics. The CEO and the garbage man get treated equally because they're clothed in Christ. Male and female, men and women are joint co-heirs with Christ, equal in Christ. Verse 29 says this, and if you belong to Christ, then you're Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. Let me pause here just for a moment. Think of those words, if you belong to Christ. There's a lot of things we can belong to, the YMCA, we can belong to our moms, our dads, our grandparents, husbands, wives, kids, but there's nothing greater than belonging to Jesus. It says, because we as a family belong to Jesus, we are Abraham's seeds, seeds heirs according to the promise. Why local multi-ethnic churches? Because it's God's fulfillment to his covenant with Abraham. Lastly, God's multi-ethnic church is a theological vision with beautiful sociological implications. In other words, the multi-ethnic church is the shape of a cross. We are vertically reunited with God and horizontally we are reunited with each other. In other words, the blood of Jesus gives us a sacred blood transfusion and we become brothers and sisters. In Ephesians 2.10, the apostle Paul says this, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. Now, typically, this is where we kind of get off of the exegetical rails and we say, well, good works is just being good. Whereas the Apostle Paul is very specific. He's saying the grace that saves us creates us as God's workmanship to do good works. And verses 11 through 16 tell us what the good works are. Listen, so then remember that at one time you were Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcised by those who are called the circumcised, which is done in the flesh by human hands. At that time you were without Christ, excluded from the citizenship of Israel and foreigners to the covenants of promise. There it is, the covenant of Abraham. Without hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, you who are far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Far away in the Old Testament is synonymous with the Gentiles. They were brought near by the blood of Christ. Verse 14, for he is our peace who made both groups one and tore down a dividing wall of hostility. So Jews and Gentiles have now been made one. In the Jewish temple, the second temple period, there was a partition where the outer courts, where the Gentiles and women could be, and behind it, Jews, and then ultimately the holies of holies. But the wall of partition literally said something to this effect, that if you are a Gentile and you pass this, you can die. So Paul used that imagery to say the hostility between ethnicities has been broken down. It has been bulldozed by the cross of Christ, by the blood of Christ. It goes on to say, in his flesh he made of no effect the law consistent of commands expressed in regulations. This is powerful. So that he might create in himself one new man from the two resulting in peace. The early church fathers would say that the church was actually a third race, the race of the resurrected, which is comprised of all the races. In the ancient world, you had Jews and Gentiles. Now you have Jews, Gentiles, and this new race called the church. Verse 16, he did this so he might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross by which he put the hostility to death. For too long, we've preached a cross that is too small. The big cross of God not only connects us and reconciles us vertically, but it reconciles us horizontally. The church 
has a beautiful theological vision with powerful sociological implications. It means that we begin to love each other as those who are clothed in Christ and belonging to Abraham as a result of God's promise.